Hello everybody, welcome to the Squiggly Lion. My name is Squiggles and I am going to help you understand a little bit more about PineScript and on TradingView and its uh, functions and uses. So we see here we have some basic red and green candles as normal. However, if I just bring out of that, I'm going to add a basic indicator and I'm going to do a search for SMA, which stands for Smoothed Moving Average, sometimes known as Simple Moving Average. And that's what we have here. We have a red line, which if we have a look at the settings of the Smooth Moving Average, we can go to the little cog icon here, the format, and we can see that we have a seven, a length of seven, and the source that it is using is the closing price. Now we can also go to the style and we can see if we click on the little colored square here, we have the red color chosen and below this swatch panel, we have this slider, which indicates how transparent that color is. So at the moment, it's around about maybe 40% transparent. If I was to move it all the way to the right, that would be 100% transparent. In other words, it's invisible, it's gone. And if I move it all the way to the left, that would be 0% transparent and it would be a solid line. As well as this, I can choose to increase the thickness of the line. At the moment, it is number one. I could move it to number two and the line gets a bit thicker. Number three, thicker still, and number four is the maximum that I can dial here. It is also a line which I can choose to use any of these particular ways of displaying it. Now some will make a difference, some won't at the moment. For example, line with breaks doesn't do anything. A step line, what that does is it changes for each candle, so it gives you the exact value for each candle, whereas line smooths it out for you. So it's up to you how you want to use that. Now histogram, that's not going to be useful at all at this stage. Uh, cross, it replaces the line with little crosses. Area, this isn't really going to be useful, but I'll show you anyway yeah and area with breaks still not that useful columns not that useful and circles much yeah that's not useful either so let's go back to line oh dearie me let's get rid of it now so that was simple moving average but what if we wanted to do it ourselves and this is what this tutorial is all about now, at the bottom of the window, we have these five panels here. We are going to be focusing on Pine Editor. So if I click on Pine Editor, we have, this is our coding window. This is where we would type out our code. And as you can see, it has got us started with three lines here. The first line, this indicates which version of PineScript we are using. Okay, so PineScript is the uh, coding language, much like VBA for Excel or Access or JavaScript or C++ or Python or all the different languages. PineScript is essentially, it's like a simplified version. I believe it's based on the Python um, coding language. But don't quote me on that. Um, so version three is that's like the well, it's the version of the particular coding that we're using. Now the second line, number two, this is our study, and this is where we name our indicator. Uh, we give it some variables, um, or we give it sorry, not variables. We give it some um, arguments in which to use within our indicator. So at the moment. I won't go too much into it because this is just a basic introduction of how to 
use PineScript. The third line, this is our output. So this is what actually displays on screen. So if I was to save this now as it is, and I would hit the save button, it will pop up with a script name. So at the moment it's suggesting, because it's written here, my script, it's suggesting that I name this my script. So we could name it anything we like. So I'm just going to hit save. And now we have my script here. If we wanted to change that, we could just click on this little pencil and rename the script. So let's call it my, I'll get rid of that. Let's call it a moving average. My moving average, there we go. And now I have renamed my moving average. And while I'm at it, I may as well change the name of it here. Okay, so if I hit save, our little red asterisk will eventually disappear. There we go. And now I'm going to add this to my chart. And there it is. So if I just close the pine window for now, get rid of the advertising and get rid of that. So here we have an this is basically plotting the closing price all the way along. Doesn't really, it's not really that helpful because I can just look at these candles to get the closing price. But it gets us started. So then if I go up to the cog icon, I can see, well, I can see that it's a blue color because that's our default and the transparency is around about 40%. It's a line and the precision is defaulted and it's the, uh, the scale, which is the numbers here, is pinned to the right. If I wanted to pin it to the left, I could do that, and now I've got a scale over here. All right, so let's cancel that. Okay, let's make it useful. We are going to create a simple moving average. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable in which to hold the value that needs to be plotted. Now a variable, if you consider a variable, it is like, it's like a cardboard box, or not necessarily cardboard, but it's like a box. And in that box is whatever you calculate or whatever formula or whatever situation you have with numbers and whatever, so that when you, when it outputs the value that is equated in that box, rather than typing out a whole big formula, you can just refer to that box and then whatever result is from that box, that's what gets outputted. So what I mean by that is I'm going to create a variable. So to create a variable, you just give it a name. So let's call this one uh, my MA for my moving average. Now you could write the whole word my moving average. Cannot have spaces. So if you did want to put spaces, you would have to do something like underscore uh, moving underscore oops, take off caps lock. A B E R A G E. So now that's a variable. But the whole point of using a variable is so that you don't have to keep typing out a whole lot of stuff. So let's just call it my MA, right, just so that we can refer to it for now. Now the variable my MA is going to be equal to whatever you decide to put in this box. So we go equals, now we don't have to put a space there, we could just go equals and then something, but just to make it a little bit easier to read for humans, let's put a space equals space, so that's okay. Now, my moving average, we are going to use the average over time, or when I say time, I mean per candle, of the average of the price. And we know from basic schooling that to get an average, we total up the, a series of uh, numbers, and then we divide that total by the amount of numbers that we had to total up. Okay, so uh, to total, 
the function that we would use in PineScript is the function sum and that is lowercase okay so all the functions that we use are lowercase so I'm going to go sum and then within the parenthesis I'm going to sum a data point and it needs to know how many data points okay so the data point that I want to be summing up is the closing price so we use the function name close so I am referring to the close of each candle now to separate the two arguments as it's called so a function has arguments yeah. I could think of a joke but I didn't um, so to separate the arguments they are separated by a comma so the first argument from the sum function was the data point that it needs to total up so which is close and how many so I'm going to go comma I'm going to put a space just because I can and I'm going to sum up the last five periods or five candles so if I was to do that I would get the closing price if I use my little measuring tool here we would get that's six bars so let's do that there we go so the five candles see five bars and let's get rid of this annoying thing so we have five bars so what it is doing is it's going to sum up that closing price plus that closing price plus that closing price plus that closing price plus that and plus where it is now so uh, currently the price is let's get rid of this now currently the price is 4051.3 so it would go 4051.3 plus say 4056 plus whatever that is whatever that da, da, da. so let's say it's within the 4000 range 5 so it would be around about the 20,000 uh, value now we know that the price is not 20,000 I wish so what we need to do now is because we have summed up five periods or the most recent five periods we then divide that by five periods and that way we get the average of the closing price and that's the formula for a simple moving average and that the result from this formula is stored in the variable that we named my ma which means now that I want to plot that variable I just refer to my ma pop, copy that in there and now when I hit save our blue line which if I just bring this down a bit and move that up a little bit when I hit save it will smooth itself out a little bit okay and there it is so that is a five period simple moving average All right now let's get rid of the arrow for now okay now let's see what if we we, we well the five period moving average is fine however what if we want it to be uh, a 10 period moving average okay so what we would need to do is we would need to go into the code and we would have to change 5 to the number 10 and we would also have to change the amount that it's divided by by the number 10 and then we'd have to say hit save again and it will smooth it out even further hmm not too bad what if we wanted it to be a 13 period moving average well it's going to get tedious having to go into the code and changing it every single time and hitting save and blah 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 so let's create a second variable before the variable of my MA so that rather than typing it in there and typing it in there we're going to refer to this variable and so the variable name is going to be called moving average and now I'm going to use an underscore length and 
that is going to be equal to, uh, let's say 13. Now, we've set the number 13 to be in this box, so I'm going to copy that variable name, and I'm going to replace there and I'm going to replace it there. So now when I hit save I can get a 13 period moving average which looks very similar to what it was. However I still have to go into the code and change 13 if I want to change it. What we want is the the user to give their own input and change it to whatever number they want. So we are going to use the function name input and we're going to open parenthesis and then we can close parenthesis so now we have the input of 13 in the variable moving average length so now if I hit save we get the same thing but what's different now is that if we go into our cog icon we can see here my moving average and we have a variable of 13 or uh, yes a variable of 13 so if we go into the cog icon we now have this third tab up the top called inputs and there it is moving average length 13 and that is taking oops that is taking the variable name so that we know what it is moving average length there's the underscore and everything. So now if I change 13 to say 14 or 15 or 16 or 17 or I hover in there and scroll my mouse wheel now it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother. All right or if I scroll it down it's getting jumpier and bumpier. Oh there we go look at this. We can't go less than zero in fact I doubt we can even get to zero. There we go. So it has to be a positive integer. So we can actually code that. To do so, we need to go into the input function and we need to say, well, let's say, first of all, you don't have to do this as a step, but you can. So you can say DEFVAL, which stands for default value, is equal to 13. And the min value is equal to 1. Okay, so now if we hit save, it's going to look exactly the same. There it is. But now if I go into the format and I scroll down and down and down, I'm still scrolling, but I can't get I can't get less than 1 because that's the minimum value. So now we don't get those errors. All right, you can still choose to smooth it out, but that's good. Okay, next, what should we do next? Well, let's say that we, um, well, we don't want to have ma underscore length. That's a little bit stringent. Stringent? No, it's a little bit, well, whatever, un-Englishified. So I am going to I'm going to keep the variable name. Actually, I can shorten the variable name. Let's call it malen. But remember, I'm referring to that variable here, so I need to change that variable so that they are the same. However, I am going to create. I'm going to title it and you title it with the, with the word title, lowercase, is equal to, now a title is a series of uh, characters, or it's a string value, if you understand what I mean. So we start with double quotes, and I'm going to title that uh, moving average length, nice and human readable. So if I hit save, and let it do its thing, there we go, and I go into the cog icon. Now I have renamed. Yeah, I'll leave that for now. I've now renamed it something a little bit more descriptive. Okay. Now, and now I get rid of that and that. Okay, so let's have a look. 
we have this thin blue line we have the format now let's say ah uh, well let's say that we wanted to be able to see that a bit better we didn't want to have 40% transparency we wanted it to be 0% transparency um, we wanted the line thickness to be 2 and actually we want it to stand out a bit so let's make it yellow okay nicely done much easier okay so let's now let's go into there again right now you can see here plot yellow okay well let's let's see if we can rename that one which we can I'm going to say the title again we're using title title is equal to uh, moving average line now watch what happens it's yellow at the moment and it's a line thickness of 2 when I hit save it's not going to remember that it's gone back to blue so what do we do about that so we can actually code how we want this plot line to appear so that it stays that way now we chose a line width of 2 and we chose a color of yellow so one of the things we can actually do is we can have a look at what's possible within the plot line and to do that if we hover over the word plot it pops up with this little floaty window here but if we go off it disappears so if we hold the control button and click left click that we get this pop up and up the top it explains a lot about what that function is the plot function these are all the things that we can do with a plot line we can have the series which is the variable my ma or close or whatever it is we have the title which we have a title and we can change the color the line width the style we can track the price we can adjust the transparency then we have some other more advanced things which we'll go into in another video but histbase is for histograms offset that's coming up in another video join well that could be another video same with all of these same with the show last so at the moment really all we can all we're going to focus on at the moment are these ones here maybe minus that oh, I'll explain what track price is it's pretty pretty boring anyway so we've got title so let's now change the color or let's actually define the color so we're going to use the keyword color c-o-l-o-r it is missing the u because it's obviously an American spelling so we're going to go color equals yellow and I'm also going to set the transparency so I'm going to go comma and we're going to use the keyword T-R-A-N-S-P for sh short for transparency transparency is equal to zero now the last thing are the style so we're going to go we don't have to do this because it's already a line so we're just going to do it anyway so style equals line now I'm not putting spaces in it you can if you like it doesn't make any difference I could do that and that and that and that it just takes up more room that's all now if we hit save we should get a thin yellow line there it is and what we can do is we can add the function function the argument line width being equal to 2 and now we can hit save and we'll get rid of this as well and now it'll get a bit thicker and there it is okay so now we have a thicker yellow line now in this uh, in this simple moving average it's handy but generally a simple moving average is used over the candles all right not not all the time sometimes you can use a simple moving average on other other uh, values but in this situation it would make sense to be overlaid on top of the candles now 
there's two ways we could do that. We could click on the little arrow over here and we could uh, move to the existing pane above and that would just not work very well. So we'll undo that. Uh, maybe we want to merge. I guess we can't do it. Never mind. So what we can do is we are going to tell the code that to overlay this indicator on the main window. And this is the main window where all the candles, all the candle action happens. So we use the keyword overlay and we set this. Overlay is a Boolean uh, value. So it's either true or it's false. That's what Boolean means. True or false. That's it. Those are your only two options. So without it, it defaults to false. So we're going to equal it to true. Now I'm going to save it. It's not going to do anything yet because we already are displaying it down the bottom. And there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this indicator and then I'm going to re-add it to the chart and this time it's going to overlay over the candles. And there we are. So now up here we can go we can scroll it back and we get a sharper line or we can make it bigger and we can get us we can scroll it all the way out to say a 55 moving average like that and now we have our 55 period moving average and that's what that looks like okay now we have my moving average as its title but let's uh, if we see above I have the volume bars turned off uh, for now but you see vol vol is short for volume so what if we wanted to have something like that as well so to do that we are going to alter the study line. Now to begin with, the title of this study is called My Moving Average. And if I control click onto the study function, we can see title and short title. And there's the overlay that we just did. So the short title is what is displayed here. Okay. The um, standard title is what would be displayed if you were to look up your favorites and you would see all of these these are the these are the titles not the short titles okay so let's let's pop it in there and we're going to say short title equals and now we use quotes again uh, let's call it uh, my ma there we go. So now, if we if we watch up here, my moving average, and I hit save, we're going to see this shorten down. And there it is, my MA. Okay. So that is annoying. And so that is um, how we do ear overlay. Now, supposing, well, when it comes to writing code, there are efficiencies that you can sometimes need to worry about. Like if you have hundreds of lines of code, you want to try and make your code as, as efficient as possible so that it, uh, it runs quickly. So to do that, what we can actually do in this situation is that PineScript already has this simple moving average function or this calculation built in in a very efficient manner. So to do that, we are going to change the function sum and we are going to use the function SMA, okay? And the function SMA, see it's turned a little blue color there. The SMA function takes two arguments, the source and the length. Okay, so we already have the length there, which is the moving average length, which means we do not need the divided by moving average length on the end of it. So now if I do that, we should see exactly the same line. And there it is, exactly the same line. 
Now, as well as having a SMA, which is the simple moving average, we can also have an exponential moving average. And some of you may have guessed, if we just change the S to an E, there it is, EMA, and hit save, now the line should change to a slightly more hugging line, which it did. Okay, so that's EMA. So now I'm just going to uh, delete those spaces out of there, like so. Now, why, you're probably asking, well, so what? If, if it's already built in, why go about coding it yourself when you can just choose it there? And I'll explain why. Let's say I want my 13 period moving average. Let's just for now, argument's sake, let's turn this to an aqua color. And let's get a simple, simple moving average. Where is our simple moving average? All right, so maybe it's not there, SMA. Smooth moving average. Okay, all right, well, let's go smooth moving average. Uh, so we got that one. So we're going to have that one set to, say, 21 periods. Um, I'll add another one because that's going to be, actually, let's do that now. So we'll change that default. Let's change that to uh, 21 periods. And we'll call this one, let's make it a yellow line. Oh, let's make it there. And that can be uh, period that one, two, two width. And uh, get rid of you and you. Okay, and let's change this one. We'll make this one a red, uh, full zero transparency, red color. Let's make a line width of three, and we'll make this um, 55 period. You can see I'm, I'm following the uh, Fibonacci numbers. So a three, 21, 55. Uh, what's the? Actually, it's a 13 period. Let's add the the next number, which would be the 21 plus 55. 21, 55. Uh, actually no, if I want Fibonacci numbers, we're missing one. Let's make that 34. There we go, there's our 34. So 13 plus 21 is 34. 34 and 21 is 55. So let's add one more of these. Oh, come back here. Let's add one more of these. And ah, there we go. My indicator limit has been reached. That's because I'm on the free plan. And I can only have three indicators at once. Uh, no, I don't do a 30-day trial. Let's just go no thanks. So I cannot add my fourth uh, fourth indicator. So there, that's this is actually the reason why I chose to learn PineScript. What I want is four moving averages. Let's say. So what I'm going to do is add this code again so I'm going to highlight that I'm going to copy I'm going to give it a space in between I'm going to go that one and I'm going to change this one to 21 periods um, that one can be aqua if I'm following the um, color convention uh, that could be aqua then I'll copy that and I'll add it down here and add it a fourth time. Okay, so let's go into here. Now, the thing with variables is at the moment we have a variable of called MALEN and that is plotting the 13 period. But then we have MALEN again. Now you cannot have the same variable name because it's not going to know which one you're referring to this you keep defining the same variable it's like you're creating the same box and you know the space time continuum just doesn't allow that okay trust me so we need to give the variables their own unique names so that when referring to them it only is referring to the one instance of it so the easiest way to do that is just to number them. So first one, moving average length, let's call it the second one, moving average length two, moving average length three, moving average length four. 
and same thing down here my ma2 and that one's got to be 2 my moving average 3 and that one's got to be 3 and my moving average 4 and that one's got to be 4 now we're also referring to them within the calculation of EMA so we need to add a 2 on that one we need to add a 3 on that one and a 4 on that one and with up oh, 21 this one's going to be 34 and this one's going to be 55 um, now aqua yellow let's call this one what shall we call this one let's call this one uh, green and let's call this one red now while we're at it uh, let's give this one the line width of one because it's quick that one can be two this one can be three and this one can be four okay oh moving average length that uh, let's call that a one let's put two three four and same thing for here moving average line one moving average line two moving average line three and moving average line four now let's hit save and see if everything is okay if there's any errors it'll tell me about it wow look at that no errors at all so let's have a look at our work get rid of that okay so we have our 13 period moving average let's get an arrow going here we go 13 period moving average and turn off the magnet 13 21 34 55 brilliant and if we go into the cog see these are our variables up here go into the cog or our format there we are they're all named properly moving average length one moving average length two three and four and if we go into the style we have moving average line one aqua of one moving average line two yellow of two three and four and the thicknesses are increasing okay so that's why we may want to learn how to do pine script code because this counts as one indicator I am now free to add two more indicators for example I may want to add the RSI and I can or I may want to add the MACD and I can but that's all I can add for now so that's that so we'll close those off for now okay now what we can also do is uh, let's let's explain a little bit of uh, some things you may come across so for example let's say I let's just create a bit more room for now here are some tips and tricks each block of that is a moving average now you may when you're when you're writing your code you may have lines lots and lots and lots and lots of lines yeah, let's just do that for now okay so you may have lots and lots of lines of code and you may want to set up at the beginning of your code all the inputs all right so rather than having them the way I've got them here you might want to have all the lengths the user inputs up the top so that you can see where you are so to do that what you can do is you may want to move the second one you may want to move that line up now rather than highlighting it going cut and then clicking up here and hitting paste if you put your cursor within that line you hold the alt button and arrow up you will move that line up and then I can go down to the next one hold alt move it up go down to the last one hold alt move it up which means I can then organize all the calculations into a grouping like that so now we have all the uh, user inputs in one group all the calculations in one group and all the outputs in one group 
Now you may want to move this whole block of code up as well, which I've highlighted that whole code. Do the same thing, Alt and Up. And there you go. So now if I delete all those lines. So that's how we can uh, move things around. Now let's suppose you wanted to make a fifth line. Probably should have done this before I switched them all around, but anyway, what you can do is if you hold Alt and shift you will make a copy. Alright, so you see now we've got another moving average length 4 and I can move that one around if I wanted to. Okay, however for now I'm just going to hold shift and home and then delete. Uh, no, I'm going to go to the end of the line then shift and home and delete and then delete one more time. Okay, now what happens if you made a mistake? Let's say I accidentally didn't name that last variable, and so probably. Uh, so now I have moved my my ma there, and I have a my ma there. So let's hit save, and I'll show you what happens. It will pop up down the bottom in red, just to really punch it home. Line twelve, the variable my ma is already declared. Line 12, that one there, my MA, yes, it's right, it's already declared. So it kind of helps in, uh, in in finding an error, it, debugging, all right? It doesn't have a built-in debugger, uh, which would be really handy if it did have a debugger, where it would be great if you could just step through the lines of code, maybe have a little... You know, intermediate window over here telling you what the variables are going, what's happening, um, so that you can go through. Okay, so at this point, whatever. So um, I'm assuming that this video has gone on a little bit too long, so I will um, wrap it up. Uh, so just in a quick summary, this is what we have covered today. Uh, we have covered. That we are using version 3. There are other versions you can use but we can go into that in another stage. The study line titles our indicator and it also can give it a short title and that's where we can choose to overlay the indicator over the main, uh, main candles. We have variables and we can input, we have the user input their own variable, uh, their own values we can title those as well to make it easier to read and distinguish which is which. All right, like these here and there. Uh, we can do calculations using built-in functions. Now, if you want to know uh, where to find other functions, if you go over to the right here under the Help menu, uh, I usually like to um, do the one in a new window because that opens a new tab in your browser and that's where you can do a search um, these are various operators built-in variables and there's a big 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 long list of variables okay so if we look under say e where are you e no you're back there e where did e go e is gone what there is no E. E. M. Okay, that's weird. Anyway, we can click on that, and that explains the built-in function of EMA. We have a source and we have a length, and this is um, this is sort of the explanation on how EMA is calculated. So X and Y is the source and length. Uh, alpha, that's just a variable name, is equal to 2 divided by the length plus 1 and then we sum up, we, we create a variable called sum, that's confusing, uh, and we set it to 0, 0.0 and then we change that value to be this and then it outputs that. So that's what's happening when we write EMA. So that's why it's much easier just to write EMA rather than remembering the code. So moving forward, uh, EMA is much easier to use and it's a lot quicker too.
So that's our exponential moving average or simple moving average. There are other moving averages you can choose to use if you want to read up about them. So if you uh, found this helpful and you and you wanted to uh, learn a bit more, then by all means you can jump over to uh, my Discord, which you will find, say, if you go to the bottom of the um, the the description, you will see a link. Join my Discord and hang out. There it is. There, click on that, jump in, and uh, this a community of like-minded coders and people discussing ideas. I will post uh, links to my videos there and I also have started posting the text of the code that I have worked on for that particular video as well. So that can, so if you wanted to copy and paste it, you can do so. Um, if, yeah, so I'm glad, I'm glad to have done this. I've actually already done this video uh, a few months back uh, while I was just getting started and unfortunately I was still figuring out the uh, sound and the quality issues so the first version of this video wasn't very good resolution and the music that I had in the background was too loud so I apologize about that if you've had to sit through that um, so that's why I'm doing this one I'm redoing it and um, Hopefully it's, uh, I'll eventually take the first one down, I guess, may as well. Okay, so uh, thank you everybody. I'm, uh, tune in for the next video or browse to my, uh, my YouTube channel, uh, The Squiggly Lion. And there's a bunch more videos there now. And I shall be doing, well, I'll be doing more in the future as well. So if you do like this video, hit like if you didn't like it hit the dislike and subscribe if you thought you want to know more about PineScript um, if you want to find out immediately when I post a new video then hit your notification button and if you're brand new to YouTube then welcome to YouTube and um, yeah what you can do is you can well I can't do it here because this is my video so hit subscribe hit the like button see that one there this number's got to go up and uh, yeah I'm glad to have uh, been of assistance to you guys so catch you later have a lovely day do good things and uh, share the video around catch you later